presentation slides pulled up. Excellent. Okay, looks like we have everything set and ready to go. As I was saying, we want to thank everybody for joining us today. We're so glad that you're here and we're so happy to connect uh, and, and, and touch base and collaborate with everybody within our communities to talk about these very important topics. Today's topic, uh, specifically looking at advanced directives and advanced care planning and what all of that means. So you can be certain that you and your family and your loved ones have everything in order and have, have the communication in place so that people know what type of care that you want and what your plans are. And we're gonna review a very specific tool, a planning tool that's called Five Wishes. And you may already be familiar with Five Wishes. Uh, and if so, we'll do, we're gonna do a, an overview and a review. And if not, uh, we'll take you through each one of these wishes and what they mean. And overall, we're looking at being able to help with planning. So you, like I said, your family, uh, and you can receive the care that you want and the care that you deserve. So let's go ahead and take a look at this picture here. And if you look real close, you can see, of course, this is a, a surgery operating hospital room uh, from many, many, many years ago. Um, and you can see just so many differences. And I have to tell you, one of the first differences that jumps out for me when I see this is no gloves and no masks. But if you look at the environment, the equipment, I mean, and this was state of the art at the time, right? And this was in the early 1900s. And why I'm showing this is because we take a look at this picture today and where we are at here and how far advanced that we've come in medicine. And in contrast, advances in medical technology have just gone so far beyond our beginning times. And for otherwise healthy patients, these miracles and advancements in care can really be the difference between life and death and afford so many injured or temporarily debilitated people necessary life-saving interventions. And when we consider someone uh, in the end, at end of life, in that, in that terminal phases of an illness, these same types of miracle artificial life-saving measures really may offer no hope for recovery. They may also bring about some discomforting outcomes for, for families and patients alike. And if you've had the experience you know, or if you know of friends, family, neighbors that have had this experience, oftentimes the decisions for which types of treatment that whether you're using extreme or invasive or even sometimes debilitating te technological measure, measures in healthcare, they frequently fall to family members while that patient, that person is unable to communicate. And, and it happens so often without insight into what that person actually wants for their care uh, and how to know how to make the best decisions based on somebody's needs. This presentation is going to cover practical steps to make your wishes known and honored, how to be there for your loved ones when they need you the most, and what are some follow-up steps for communication so you can ensure that the people within your care teams, your, your physicians and the people that you work with and your family are all aware of what your wishes are and you know what theirs are as well. So we take a look at Aging with Dignity, and this is actually an organization titled Aging with Dignity, a national not-for-profit organization founded in 1996, and they're truly inspired here, by, as you can see, by Mother Teresa, and Aging with Dignity helps people plan for and receive the care that they want in case of serious illness. There's over 23 million uh, different versions of 28, in 28 languages of the Aging with Dignity Five Wishes that we're going to talk about today. But Five Wishes is a tool that comes from the not-for-profit organization, Aging with Dignity. Now, we've all learned over, over the years based on research and literature and mainly through experience, as you know, that what do people really want, especially when we're talking about end of life, uh, people wanna die at home. And dying at home 
mostly when people are saying they want to die at home, so they don't want to die in a hospital, they don't want to die in a, in a facility, that people want to be home, comfortable, surrounded by their loved ones. We also find in, in these top items here of what people want at end of life is people want to be free from pain and to be in the company of loved ones as we were just talking about. And really when we think about what do we want uh, is to retain control over the care that we receive. So if you think about any scenarios or situations that you have been, uh, have experienced or seen, witnessed, where that person, that patient, just not, not only doesn't have control over what's happening, but decisions are being made for them that, that they may not have wanted. And you can see the types of impact that that may have caused. So when we look at this contrast of reality, so we say, gosh, we know people want to die at home, but how often does that actually happen? The research tells us that less than 25% of Americans, like of our entire country, die at home. Although more than 70% told us, told, talk about that's they wanted to die at home, but most did not. Dying is often unnecessarily painful and isolating. Well, how can that be when people tell us they, they, they want pain free and comfort and they want to be su surrounded by their loved ones? Um, and overall, we learned that only 20 to 30% of our entire population has completed what's called an advanced directive. Five Wishes, this tool that we're talking about today, is an advanced directive tool that gives certainty and communication of your wants and needs, and for you to understand the wants and needs of your loved ones as well. So we're looking overall at how can we see what people want and comparing that to what actually happens. So why is there this stark contrast in reality? Well, we know doctors aren't always aware of what patients, what people's wishes are, because that communication hasn't happened. Uh, we find in a major study uh, from, two, uh, from 2007 that only 25% of physicians knew that their patients even had an advanced directive completed. So it's one uh, step that we're going to look at what the tool is, that we have the tool, that we complete the tool, that, that we're actually taking the tool and using it as communication between us, our friends and family that, uh, that need to know, and then our physicians and our care teams. And we often find that end of life is treated as what people call a medical moment, meaning, excuse me, meaning that a medical moment is uh, just being treated as that one time episode situation that comes up and, and is happening where actually we know that planning for end of life is something we all have the ability to do and we do this sooner uh, ra rather than later. So the solution we're talking about here in this uncertainty without communication and without sharing with people to moving to that certain time is looking at an having an advanced directive. And as I've been saying, we're gonna talk specifically about five wishes. What's excellent about Five Wishes and what we have found that people have really liked about Five Wishes as we've used the organization Aging with Dignity's tool Five Wishes is it's a really simple format and it's in really easy everyday language for anybody to really understand versus uh, some of these tools and forms that, that you read trying to understand and interpret what that language is sometimes can be very complicated. So it's easy, the language is easy. It really gives peace of mind that you have everything in order and communicated. Also helps for your families and your friends and your loved ones to avoid guessing and to avoid guilt. Uh, you may have seen or experienced a, a situation where a patient, a, a person may even have some type of advanced care planning tool in place and they had assigned their daughter as their patient advocate saying, oh, she'll know what to do. Well, when the time came, uh, the daughter sees the form and, uh, and has the physician and the care teams asking uh, to make the decisions. And she really didn't, she didn't know because they never had a conversation. Her mom had filled everything out and had everything in order except the actual communication with that person that was appointed as patient advocate. 
So leaving that person now as responsible and not knowing what decisions to make, that leaves what we have here, that guessing and that guilt. And Five Wishes helps to ensure that you get the care that you want and the care that you deserve while supporting your family and knowing what decisions that you want to have made. Some of the other benefits of Five Wishes is Five Wishes addresses personal, emotional, and spiritual needs, right? Personal, emotional, and spiritual needs along with medical wishes. We often find that personal, emotional, and spiritual needs are not often considered unless we communicate what they are. So if you think right now in your own planning, does your physician or a physician that may be providing care for you during um, a hospital visit or during, during any episode of care, if, does that physician know what your spiritual faith and background is? Uh, needs that you may have personal, needs that you may have emotional, uh, in addition to what your medical wishes are. The Five Wishes tool was also created with the help of the American Bar Association and healthcare experts, which helps us feel comfortable and confident that we can trust this tool. And the Five Wishes tool has been distributed by Aging with Dignity, again, the not-for-profit or organization that started and created Five Wishes um, throughout a network of at least 35,000 organizations overall. And as you know here, Angela Hospice does also share the Five Wishes tool. So Five Wishes is also about promoting human dignity. We've learned, we've found, and we hear from people and their families that sometimes medicine doesn't know when to stop, but knowing when to stop certain curative treatments, certain curative aggressive treatments also depends on people's goals, their knowledge of what their choices are and their communication of what their wants and needs are. And Five Wishes helps to be able to communicate what you want and equally as important, what you don't want. So right now, now our next step here is we're gonna take a look at the actual five wishes document and we'll walk through what each one of these wishes actually are. And to give you an idea, if you've not ever seen one or if you've not completed a five wishes, what the experience may be like. We're gonna stop and sharing for just a moment as I switch screens. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Here we are. So when you have the five wishes document, uh, this, of course, as you can see, is a sample document. This is what the front cover looks like. And um, we have here uh, wishes on the front. It clearly states about medical treatment, how comfortable you want to be, who do you want to have treat you, and what do your loved ones need to know? The beginning of the five wishes document goes through exactly what we've been talking about here today. What is five wishes? How does five wishes help you and your family? And give some history here of how five wishes began. We, it goes through who should use five wishes. And if you notice, interesting, and we have questions about this sometimes, it says five wishes is for anyone 18 or older. Um, 18 or older, it, we've had people so young fill these out and say, gosh, I wasn't so sure at, at, at this age why I would be filling this out until what we found is when people go through the experience of filling out five wishes, the clarity and the insight they have of saying, gosh, I didn't even know that this was something that I had the opportunity to communicate to my care team and my family. So regardless of your age, this opportunity to utilize these tools to communicate is available. There is some, there are some uh, state specific uh, information that you can find here. Okay, and next. 
thank you for that pause. Uh, how do you change five wishes? So some people do ask us if you currently have five wishes or you have another type of tool that you use as your advanced care planning process for your patient advocate form and for your advanced directives. How do you change that? Or if you have five wishes and you're gonna start a new one, this section of their five wishes document explains exactly how, and really they make it so easy. It's the most recent copy. So they encourage here that if you're starting a new one, say today, that you want to go ahead and get rid of the ones that you had previously. So there isn't confusion if someone's trying to locate that form or if they have an old copy that we're using the most recent and that after you complete the most recent, Anybody who needs to have a copy that you make sure that you've shared your most re recent document. So let's get started with wish number one. The person I want to make healthcare decisions for me when I can't make them for myself. So wish number one goes through in detail, gives thoughts, comments, uh, approaches on how to look at this. But if you've never thought of this before, or even if you've named somebody previously in your life and you look at where you're at today and anything that may have changed, really and truly, who do we trust to make healthcare decisions for us if we're ever in the situation that we cannot make them for myself? And if you don't have this in order you, and, and it's not certain, what would happen? Or maybe you've had this experience and you can even consider and share what did happen because you didn't have this type of information communicated, who would actually be the person to step up and speak on your behalf, knowing and advocating who has your back in this type of scenario? Who would you trust? And if you have named somebody, is that person aware? So wish number one takes you through several items on who would you designate? And of course you can always change your mind. Wish number two, wish number two specifically reviews the types of medical treatment that you want or medical treatment that you don't want. Um, so when you looks at what should, uh, what should we keep in mind as a caregiver? What does life support treatment mean to you? And then wish number two gives certain certain scenarios in detail that you can walk through being close to death if permanent or severe brain damage is is, is something that's occurring uh, with no expectation of recovery uh, and so on. So what types of healthcare treatments do you want and do you not want? Let's look at wish number three. Wish number three talks about how comfortable you want to be and what's important to you. I've had some people actually share feedback with me after completing five wishes, again, about the insight that they gained and considering things that they had never thought of before uh, and how to communicate these items. So when you look through wish number three, uh, the, let's even look at this first item. It says, well, I do not want to be in pain because this says that you cross out anything that you don't agree with. But number one says, I do not want to be in pain. I want my doctor to give me enough medicine to relieve my pain, even if that means I will be drowsy or sleep more than I would otherwise. Of course, that means something different to everybody. But having these items to reflect on and this communication tool in place to share allows people to understand exactly what your wishes are. For wish number four, my wish for how I want people to treat me and again, you can see how easy here it says to please cross out anything that you don't agree with. And you can go through these items here. And wish number five, my wish for what I want my loved ones to know. What I want my loved ones to know. So when you sit and you think about this, or if you've completed something like this in the past, or you're considering completing something like this now, and or if you've completed this, but you're looking for information to share with your family, friends, and loved ones, these are all items that provide reflection and uh, areas to think about that you can now communicate. And then there's items to fill in. And then, of course, signing your five wishes is in the presence of two witnesses. And then the, you have space for that. And uh, five wishes is, does a nice job of being very specific 
uh, for each state uh, on what may be required. And then they actually give a wallet card as well. So you can keep that information with you because as we said, one of the great things about Five Wishes is having the tool in place and having your, your wishes known. But if it's, if it's not communicated or people don't know where to find it or how to access it is when we really find that there's a challenge because at that point in time, people just aren't aware. Excellent. So that sums up where we're at with Five Wishes as an advanced care planning document. And you can see how we talked about that uncertainty of not knowing, or even if you do know and your loved ones do not know, of moving through, of having this tool in place so you are clear and you're aware, and then providing that information to your physician, your care teams, and to your family and friends. At this time, uh, Jen, we can open it up for questions or if people have stories or experiences that maybe they want to share about having an advanced directive or maybe having an experience where there was not an advanced directive. Sure. So we have a couple questions. Uh, one, uh, one looks like a duplicate, so we'll just start with that one, Jennifer. Sure. Um, as, as I go through these folks, feel free to put them in the chat or unmute yourself to ask Jennifer questions directly. Um, you can put them in the chat and I won't reveal your name if that's something that you're feeling comfortable with. Um, but I think this person, and I know this, like I said, this was a duplicate question, they're asking, does the five wishes need to be notarized? And before you answer that, Jennifer, the other part of the question, not from this individual, but you probably could uh, clump the answers up, is they uh, someone also asked, does the doc does a five wish document need to be officially filed somewhere or with someone like a lawyer or an accountant? So I know I gave you a couple of questions there. I can re Thank you. reiterate them if you need me to. Those are excellent questions and they come up often uh, because those are sometimes even barriers, right? As to why or how to go ahead and get those done. One of, one of the many uh, benefits of this particular tool is Five Wishes was made to be simple. So it does not need to be filed anywhere. It needs to have the two, I, I'm holding one up here even though we had just looked at it. Uh, it needs to have the two witnesses and when you read Five Wishes, it explains it very clearly. And then in order to require, if it needs to be notarized. So I'm reading right off of the document here. There is a section for a notary. However, notary only required for residents of Missouri, North Carolina, South Carolina, and West, for West Virginia. So when you go through Five Wishes, again, they make it so simple that they do put notes uh, here if, if there's something specific to, to Michigan or to your state or if you have family and friends in another state about what needs to happen. And then on the last page here, it talks about uh, what to do after you complete five wishes. And I'm gonna pull that page up here. All right, here we go. What to do after you complete five wishes. So we won't read the whole thing, obviously, as you can see it, but just a couple points. Make sure you sign and witness the form just the way it says in the directions, then your five wishes will be legal and valid. They put that right in the document, legal and valid. Talk about your wishes with your healthcare agents and give them copies. Keep the original copy you signed in a special place in your home Right, because you, as you probably have seen or experienced, we don't want to leave it in a safety deposit box or somewhere locked up that we can't get to it when we need it. Uh, we actually had a scenario shared with us not too long ago about a family member who was the healthcare advocate and had mom's five wishes document, and they didn't live together, but they didn't live that far apart. Well, that person kept all of the documents and all of the files with them in case there was ever a phone call and that healthcare advocate needed to step up and make those decisions. However, that is helpful, but the original documents also needed to be with that person 
So if paramedics are showing up or emergency response teams, that they can access that information as well. So it's important that the person or patient has that information with them and that the people who are healthcare advocates also have copies. It also talks about that you're filling out that wallet card, that wallet card and carrying it with you. Taking your five wishes, your advanced care planning document to your next physician appointment and give them a copy. They do not know that that, that you have this. Um, Truly, and, and and then there's sometimes that they'll say when you're checking in, they ask questions now in certain offices. Do you have one of these? So make sure that you're letting people know. And then if, if someone's admitted to a hospital or nursing home to make sure and take a copy of five wishes and that they can put it in the medical record there. So the five wishes document, as I say, they just such a nice job of being so specific and clear so you're not feeling uncertain about what you're required to do and that you can feel certain, truly and comfortable that once you have completed this, uh, that it's legal and valid. Excellent. Thank you so much. The very compact information. And, and Jennifer, I appreciate you pointing out uh, things outside of the state of Michigan, because as uh, people on the call know, and people that are watching this as, re as a recording, is sometimes we see people and we help people outside of the state of Michigan. So it's important sure. to know those restrictions and it's outlined in the booklet. So thanks yes. for, for bringing that up. Absolutely. Um, one of the questions we have is, um, the document you keep showing says sample on it. Yes. How do I get one, a copy, and where can I get a copy that doesn't have the watermark? Yes, absolutely. So there's a couple of places. Uh, one, uh, there are five wishes. There is a website, and we can provide that link. And on the website, so much more information. There's just so much information there, helpful information, and you can order them. You can order the, the hard copy or you can order an electronic copy and fill it out and print it. Uh, or we, we do provide copies here at Angela Hospice. So if you wanted to reach out to us, we'll make sure you have the appropriate contact information. Uh, we're happy to put that together for you. Uh, I've had people stop by and pick them up before in the past, um, or we, we can connect it and make sure that we get some to you. But we do keep them here. Uh, to hand out to people. Excellent, thank you. Um, again, folks, if you have questions, please feel free to do one of two things, unmute yourself and ask Jennifer directly. She'll be happy to answer those, as well as type them in the chat and I can share them uh, and have Jennifer uh, give you some answers and some additional information. I do and, have, and, oh, go ahead. Oh, is there another question? Yep, but go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to ask too, if anyone's comfortable to share any experiences that you've had um, that would contribute to, to all, all of our learning, whether you had a positive, negative, a positive experience or a challenging experience with, with having an advanced directive or challenging because there was not, not an advanced directive in place. And I'm gonna pull up the link for five wishes as we're talking. Excellent. Why, Je why Jennifer's doing that? Feel free, folks, to unmute yourself and uh, share your stories, lessons learned, or wonderful experiences that you've had in uh, advanced directives or with five wishes directly if you've had that experience. And so, Jennifer, I, 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 no one's unmuting at this point. We might That's just okay. have a lot of seekers and learners, which is exactly what Angela sure. answers is for. But I do have one question. Um, this individual asked, how often do you suggest I update five wishes with my friends and family? Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. That's such an excellent question. Um, although it, it, it's very personalized as to how often. The key in your question is that you're at that you're updating it. I would make sure that we review it and update it whenever there's any changes in your life, right? That might might come back to there's a change with your health care agent that that you designated, or you change care teams, you move like any life changes going on is certainly a signal to go back and take a look at your document and see what needs to be updated. But just being mindful to even 
schedule time for yourself if you don't have life changes just yearly to go through and take a look. But again, the timeline is very personal. But we've had people talk with us that have said, oh my gosh, mom filled that out 20 years ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and so much has changed since then. So you don't want to leave yourself uncovered because these documents have not been updated. They definitely need to be reconsidered throughout life. Thank you for bringing that up and, and very important topic. Excellent. Yes, great topics, great discussions today. So again, we welcome anyone, to, if they feel comfortable, to share with Jennifer and your fellow attendees any experience you've had, any questions that you may have that Jennifer's referenced in Five Wishes or any experience that Jennifer has had in her role uh, with her years with uh, hospice and with Angela Hospice. She's more than happy to answer those. Uh, she has put in the chat uh, the direct website to look up a Five Wishes document, which Jennifer shared with us, which is fivewishes.org. Um, or I'm sure if you call anyone here at Angela Hospice, especially in our patient asset access center, they'll be happy to direct you to that as well. When, when you go to the website, if people just want an overview here, this is what it looks like. That's um, great, Jennifer. Why don't you take a few minutes and walk if you want. We'd like sure. to walk through that. Sure. Uh, so it, it gives us all kinds of information, right, for myself and for my family. Uh, much of what we've talked about here, the Five Wishes tool in this, the National Not-for-Profit Organization, Aging with Dignity, does a wonderful job also of sharing information with all of us so we can provide education and we can all get the word out there. So it talks about digital, it talks about the paper version, view sample, right? This is where that sample came from. In my state, so very specific if you have a loved one outside of the state of Michigan, that people can look at it there. Uh, there's also a store with many other resources. Different conversation guides. Oh, this one's a family package. But the actual document itself can be ordered here. Um, and as I say, we have them here at Angela Hospice and we're happy to share them with you. Uh, Jen, I know you mentioned about calling calling any of us. Is there any specific way uh, that people should reach out? I, I'm happy to put my email address if people wanna reach out or is there another specific way to connect to make a request if somebody wants a copy? Uh, probably if you're willing to share your contact information, sure. then that'd probably be the best way to do. Okay. All right, folks, are there any other questions or sharing that you'd like to do at this time? Please feel free to do so. Jennifer has a few minutes and given us her, her uh, time this afternoon to answer questions. Anything uh, particular as it related to five wishes or uh, advanced directives or anything else particular that we can help you with. This is your opportunity to unmute yourself, uh, ask the question directly, or put yourself in chat. Um, as we do that, I'll just do a couple little housekeeping uh, and give you an opportunity to do any last minute questions. Uh, our next installment of Angela Answers is Wednesday, April 19th, uh, again at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, our director of grief care will be speaking on the loss of a parent. And this is a, a very unique loss uh, and near and dear to a lot of people's hearts here and around Angela Hospice. And it's where we become those adult orphans that you hear so much about. And it's not uh, the typical way we all like to think about passing on, but unfortunately it happens. And our director of grief care, Debbie Van, Van Landingham, will be so happy and insightful to share this information with you all on April 19th at 1 p.m. Uh, I will do a little plug. We have our golf outing coming up, our 34th annual golf outing uh, on Monday, June 12th. Uh, save the date uh, because the invitations will be coming out to you shortly. Or if you need additional information, please don't hesitate to call us here at Angela Hospice. 
uh, just call the regular number um, or log on to our website and take a look at some, uh, some sponsorship opportunities to get out and support Angela Hospice on the links on Monday, June 12th. It doesn't look, Jennifer, at this point, like we have any other questions. Um, if no one has anything, I think we'll give you some time back in your afternoon and let Jennifer say some final words and look forward to seeing you on Wednesday, April 19th at 1 p.m. Jennifer, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yes, uh, Jen, thank you. I just want to thank everybody for joining and thank you for your interest in this topic. If you have additional questions or comments or you think of things, please feel free to reach out. We learn from our community all the time. Uh, so please feel free to share your experiences or if you have a question you wanna ask uh, outside of this forum, we, 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 we're happy to help in any way that we can. And thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate the time. Uh, and thanks for uh, Jennifer Dale and the team for having me here today. And thank you, Jennifer. And of all, thank you all for joining us. We'll look forward to seeing you on Wednesday, April 19th at 1 p.m. If you don't have some sunshine in your day, go find some. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great afternoon. Mm -hmm.